programming a Terrasic Intel FPGA board in Verilog with Tina. In our other videos, we've shown how you can create a digital circuit and download to an FPGA board by using Tina's schematic editor. Programming a Terrasic Intel FPGA board with Tina using schematic design entry. And the VHDL hardware description language. Programming a Terrasic Intel FPGA board in VHDL with Tina. Now in this video tutorial, our circuit, a full adder, will be based on the Verilog hardware description language. The textual description of the hardware greatly enhances portability and reusability. By using hardware description languages describing the fundamental operations, structures, and connections, virtually any logical circuit can be defined. At the end of the video, we will use Intel Quartus Prime Lite and a Terrasic DE10 Lite Intel FPGA board to demonstrate the configuration of the FPGA. As we stated earlier, Tina works with schematics, but we can also place HDL macros, including VHDL and Verilog, in the design. To learn more about the HDL or Verilog macro creation and its role in the simulation, watch our video, Creating Macros from Verilog, Hardware Description Languages in Tina, Part 2. Okay, now let's see an example. A full adder using a full adder Verilog macro. Start Tina. Then open the full adder Verilog DE10Lite.tsc from the Tina examples backslash FPGA folder. Most digital circuits that perform addition or subtraction use full adder. This combinational circuit adds two binary digits and a carry-in to produce a sum and carry-out. This 1-bit full adder has three inputs, A, B, carry-in, including carry-in, from a previous less significant stage of a multiple bit adder, and two outputs, sum, carry-out. Let's check the Verilog code. Double-click the full adder Verilog macro. In the full adder Verilog dialog, click the Enter Macro button. As you can see, the full adder is described by this very simple two-line-long Verilog code shown on the screen. Close the Tina HDL editor window. You can also realize this circuit with a similar VHDL code. The circuit operates like a half adder, while carry-in value is low. Start the simulation by pressing the Dig Interactive button. If Tina is in a different interactive working mode, Select Digital from the Interactive menu. The Mode name on the Interactive Mode button will change to Dig. When both inputs are low while Carry In is also low, then Sum and Carry Out are also low. When just one input is low while Carry In is low, then Sum is high and Carry Out is also low. When both inputs are high when Carry In is low, then sum is low and carry out is high. Now let's see what happens when carry in is high. When carry in is high while both inputs are low, then sum is high too and carry out is low. When carry in is high while only one input is high, then sum is low and carry out is also high. When carry in is high while both inputs are high, then sum and carry out are also high. If carry in is high, then the output values change as if we had added one to the full adder. Now let's test our circuit in a real environment using the Terrasic DE10 Lite Intel FPGA board. Note, as it can be seen, this circuit is already prepared for the FPGA tool export. See our previous video, Programming a Terrasic Intel FPGA board with Tina using schematic design entry. Now let's see how to generate the source file for Intel Quartus Lite. Create a folder. We'll name our folder Designs. Then, click the T&M menu, select Export to FPGA Software, and click Intel Quartus. Save the three files, including the full adder Verilog, the full adder Verilog DE10 Lite.VHDL, and the full adder Verilog DE10 Lite.QSF files into this newly created folder. Note that Tina always creates a VHD file from any type of representation of the digital circuit. That is, schematic diagrams, VHDL, 
Verilog codes or their mix are always translated into a VHD file for Quartus. The QSF, Quartus Prime Settings file guides the FPGA software, for which the physical pins on the FPGA will be the inputs and outputs. The QSF is made from the FPGA pin settings we made previously. To produce downloadable content, we first have to create the Quartus Prime Lite project. Start Quartus. Select File, then click New Project Wizard. Enter the working directory name, in our case, C colon backslash designs, and the project name, Full Adder Verilog DE10 Lite. Click Next. Next again. Now, add the source file. From the Designs folder, select the Full Adder.v and the Full Adder Verilog DE10 Lite.vhd files as source files. Then, click Open. Click Next. In the Family Device and Board Settings dialog, under Device Family, select Max 10. Now, you can manually select the 10M50DAF484C7G FPGA from the available devices. Click Next. Leave the EDA tool settings on default. Click Next again. Finally, press the Finish button. Now, Quartus is initializing our project. We can check the full adder.v Verilog file. The V file is the module description of the Tina Full Adder Verilog macro, implementing the Full Adder functionality. Now, let's check the Full Adder Verilog DE10Lite.vhd file. The VHD file is the top-level entity, wrapping the underlying components and connections around. Copy the entity name and set it as the top-level entity, under the Assignments menu point. Click Assignments and select Settings. Paste the entity name into the top-level entity field in the dialog. Click OK. Let's add the QSF file as well. Click Assignments. And select Import Assignments. From the Designs folder, select the full adder Verilog DE10 Lite.qsf file. Then, click Open. The content of the QSF file will tell the software which FPGA pins are to be used for the logic inputs and outputs. Click OK. Now, to produce configuration data for the FPGA, right-click on Compile Design, then click Start. Now, connect the DE10 Lite with the Quartus machine via USB. As soon as the Quartus Prime full compilation was successful message appears, Right-click the program device, then click Open. Click the Start button to program the device. You will see the progress bar at 100% successful message. And the conf LED will light up on the board. Now, let's see how our simulated, full adder circuit works along with the programmed DE10 Lite hardware. To have a closer look at the DE10 Lite hardware, we'll now zoom into the area of the three switches. SW0, SW1, and SW2, and the corresponding LEDs, LEDR0 and LEDR1. We'll change the virtual switches in TNIC by clicking them on the screen. And at the same time, we'll also change the real switches on the DE10 light board. When both inputs are low while carry-in is also low, then sum and carry-out are also low. While just one input is low while carry-in is low, then sum is high and carry-out is also low. When both inputs are high when carry-in is low, then sum is low and carry-out is high. Now let's see what happens when carry-in is high. When carry-in is high, while both inputs are low, then sum is high too and carry-out is low. When carry-in is high, while only one input is high, then sum is low and carry-out is also high. When carry-in is high while both inputs are high, then sum and carry-out are also high. As you can see, in all cases, the results are exactly the same. This is a great example of demonstrating the power of simulation, since you can test and debug circuits even before realizing them and in our case before downloading to FPGA, where if there were any issues, 
it would be extremely hard to find the problem. This concludes our video tutorial of programming an FPGA development board using Verilog macros with Tina's built-in digital components. Check our video Programming a Terasic Intel FPGA board in VHDL with Tina, where we use a VHDL component in FPGA design. For more information, visit our website, www.tina.com. Visit our YouTube channel, www.youtube.com user slash Tina Design Suite.